Good evening and welcome to episode six of Forecast from Flagstaff. Thanks for joining us again tonight. And to all of our students, happy first day of class. And also happy birthday to Annika's mom. For those of you that tuned in earlier this summer, you learned our first day of uh, class was Annika's mom's birthday. Uh, so I want to wish her a, a happy birthday as I know she's uh, tuning in uh, tonight. So if you haven't met me yet, my name is Chad Eikhoff. I serve as Director of Admissions here at NAU. And I am joined by my colleague, Annika. Hi, thanks, Chad, and thanks for wishing my mom a happy birthday. Um, as Chad mentioned, this is our sixth episode of Forecast from Flagstaff. And I guess we could say it's our series finale as it is the first day of school. Our effort with these forecasts have been to give you the information in as near as real time as we can about those pressing questions about what a very different fall 2020 we will have here at Northern Arizona University. My name is Annika Olson and I serve as the Vice President for Enrollment Management. And I know a couple weeks ago on episode five, we had lots of chatter in the chat window about um, the RAs that had tested positive. So I just wanted to dive right in there as we were hosting we were capturing questions throughout the day. Um, and, and in this episode, we sent out a survey to get um, questions in advance. And so we have uh, many, many of those are ready. And some of those are also being answered by team members in the chat now. But with last episode's chat in the RAs, I did want to dispel some, some basic misinformation that's been out there, not only during the chat, but also since then in some different um, press that has um, been garnered. So just straight up, we made the decision to have all new residential students test prior to them checking in. And we're gonna be digging into that a little bit later with one of our guests. Within 24 hours, our RAs were already arriving on campus. And so many of them had tested in advance. We had instructed them to limit contact for the 14 days prior for, to them coming for, to start their training. One of those students had tested prior to joining us here on campus and got the call um, a, about a day and a half into training that they had tested positive. At that time, our protocols were in place and were kicked in immediately. So out of an abundance of caution, we did isolate that whole staff, even though many of them hadn't had close contact with that particular individual. All of those students were tested and um, not another one was not positive, just the one. And out of direction of our campus health team and a huge, huge shout out to them. They have, um, you know, worked overdrive the last um, couple weeks, making sure we're, we're just really prepared for students as they're arriving to campus. I did want to get out there with that information because there has been quite a bit of misinformation surrounding that. So just wanted to go ahead and tackle that at the top of our time together today. Um, and as always, I'm going to say happy birthday to my mom, Karen. So happy birthday, mom, and kick it over to Chad to give us the forecast. Yes, always a tradition. It's not forecast from Flagstaff without at least a little bit of a weather forecast. And right mid 80s and then increasing up to about 90 degrees as we head into the weekend. We've had absolutely beautiful weather uh, these last several weeks. Still waiting on that monsoon season to really uh, take effect and uh, get some rain going. But we've had clear skies. I had a chance to get out and enjoy our awesome dark skies here in Flagstaff and watch some of our meteor showers uh, last night. And probably a another good night to do so again. Uh, another warm evening. So we. Uh, earlier this week, opened up a, a testing center in partnership with FEMA uh, here on campus uh, in our field house. And NAU TVs and the, the voice of the Lumberjack, Jacks, uh, Mitch Stroman, had the opportunity to uh, utilize that testing facility. So we've got a video um, of him getting tested. So let's take a look. I want you to open up your kit. Right. And there's a swab. There's a little package with one swab in it and there's that glass tube. Those are the two things I want you to take out. 
And this is a test you're going to administer to yourself. Doing this but I'm going to myself. walk you through it, so it's okay. very easy. Okay, so right now you're going to leave that tube there. Okay. Pick up that swab. So what you're going to do is take that swab, put it up your nostril until it feels uncomfortable. So you'll notice your eyes might water. Okay. They might, uh, you might cough. And that's why I want you to have these with you. Okay. So you can kind of catch it. Once you've rotated it two times, I want you to count to 15 at a moderate pace. And then you're going to pull it down and do it to the other side. And repeat in the other nostril. Yup. Oh, oh yeah. No. Okay. See? Does that seem about right? Are you feeling it? I'm feeling like it. Like you're not liking it? Yeah. Rotate it twice. Okay, rotate it twice. Makes my eyes water, but it's not horrible. It's not the other test. Okay. Correct? It's not like the other one. One, two, three, four, five. Now exactly. what do I do with what do I do with the swap? So you're gonna open that file. Okay. And you're gonna make sure the cotton side goes down into the liquid. Okay. Close this tightly. Close it tight because we're going to mail it. We don't want yours opening. You're going to um, put it in your bag. Okay. And seal that up. So I wanted to send a special thank you to our own Mitch Stroman for taking us through um, the test that's happening now in a, a walk-in fashion from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m every day, seven days a week. And as you heard Mitch say, it's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be. So certainly not something you wanna have to do every day, but if you want to free of charge for students, faculty, staff, and community can walk in. And that has really been a Herculean effort by a number of people, both on and off campus. From our own Christy Farley, TC Eberly, Krista Allen, our student affairs team, along with the county health team and FEMA, we have been able um, to do that and offer that right here on campus. So students can just walk up and uh, get tested just like you saw Mitch do. I am more than happy to, uh, to welcome a new face to the forecast, Mr. Matt Tantow. He serves as our executive director of enrollment and student services and is a huge asset to the enrollment team. So thanks for joining me, Matt. Oh, thanks for having me here. Yeah. So Matt, um, we've heard a lot here on campus about the COVID Information Center or the CIC as we have been calling it. Um, can you talk to us about what that is and what we can expect? Yeah, you know, Annika, as you know, the with COVID uh, here at NAU and across, um, you know, the state and the country, things are changing all the time. And we know that we wanna to try to provide accurate information to families and students and so we are going to be um, setting up or I, I guess implementing or rolling out is the best word on Friday, this Friday, the COVID Information Center. And this is going to be really a one location for students and families to call or email to get their questions answered regarding COVID on the NAU campus. This can be anything from move in to uh, campus health uh, hours of operation to how do I contact my faculty because maybe I need to be remote. Um, we will help answer all those questions for you. And if we can't answer those questions, we will definitely get you connected to somebody who can, or we will find out the correct answer and get back to you. And so our goal is really to be able to provide accurate information, timely information, and be really a resource for families and parents. Awesome. So kind of a one-stop shop for all things you NAU got COVID. It. Okay, so what hours um, can we expect to um, be able to call and reach out to the information center? Yeah, so starting on Friday, we're going to be going uh, Monday through Friday. So we'll, we'll start the phone line up on Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends, we'll be doing 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, cool. And the number, uh, we, we got the COVID Information Center graphic up there. The number is 928 523 7700. And the email is covidinfo at nau.edu. And our goal is to try to respond to those emails, same business day, um, and try um, 24 hours at the most, and try to get that information back to you. And we have a great staff who's been trained to answer those questions. And we have been working with uh, 
departments across campus, campus health services, campus dining, residential life, housing, to really gather all the information and make sure there's one place for you, the student and parents to go to. Awesome, well, that is great. What kind of questions are you anticipating to come in on, um, with the COVID Info Center? Yeah, great question. I think, you know, it's gonna be really sort of cyclical with the calendar, right? And so I think right now we're expecting a lot of conversations questions about testing and moving because we know that's at the top of everybody's mind right now as they pack up maybe their home packing up and getting ready to come up the mountain or come out to Flagstaff so we are prepared to answer all those questions as it relates to moving and testing on the NAU campus and then you know we'll probably pivot as uh, classes get rolling in uh, late August we'll probably pivot and really be uh, answering questions uh, regarding campus health services, regarding uh, class attendance and things like that, that will probably just pop up as things um, happen on campus and as students go about their daily life here on the NAU campus. And so we really wanna be here to support students and families. Great. Well, I know one question that I've been asked by a number of students and parents um, on email and the phone lines, and I know you've been asked it too, is how do I submit those test results. So as many of you know, we are requiring all of our residential students to submit test results prior to them moving in, um, which is, is one way we're, we're mitigating mm -hmm. some, some risk. Um, and I know about 2,500 students have already submitted yep. um, when I checked earlier today, but how would a student who's packing up at home, getting ready to make the drive or head to Flagstaff, how would they upload those results that's great so a student who is packing up and ready to come up the mountain we definitely want you to be uploading those tests now um, because that will really expedite your check-in process once you arrive to the flagstaff campus and so the best thing for you to do is all students who are checking in and have a check-in appointment uh, probably about 48 hours or a little more before that uh, appointment you should be receiving an email from housing and residential life and there's a link in that email for you to upload your test now if you've lost the email or you can't find the email you can easily go to the nau.edu jacks are back website click on uh, move in and testing and there's a link right there that will link you to the uh, online form to upload that test result one bit of information i want uh, folks to know if you are an iphone or ipad user um, it's a little different um, when you go to the form you'll fill the form out you'll submit the form and you'll notice you won't be able to actually upload a document well you'll get an email in about 10 minutes after submitting that form that will allow you to upload the document there so you want to go ahead and do that so it's sort of a two-step process for folks using the iphone okay so yep. iphones and ipads a, a little longer process, mm -hmm. but um, still upload those results as soon as you get them. We know a number of you aren't checking in for another couple weeks, yep. and so um, closer to your move-in time is great, but we know we have some students um, moving in this weekend. Um, and so certainly want to get those done so we can um, make sure it's a smooth check-in process. Great. And you should receive a confirmation email back that oh, says cool. you've been verified. So once you get that uh, email, save that email because you'll show that uh, to the residence hall staff when you check in to your residence hall. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Matt's going to take a little break right <laughs> now, um, but he'll join us for some more Q&A later in our time together. Um, I did want to make mention, certainly the COVID Information Center is going to be a great resource that a 7700 line or COVID info at nau.edu starting Friday. But another great source of information is our NAU Go app. So whether you're an Apple user and can download it from the Apple App Store, or if you're an Android user in that Google Play Store, um, for free, NAU Go is going to be key to, for you to be successful on campus. And let's take a look at this video and see some great uses of that very tool.
Welcome back. So definitely download that NAU Go. You can also access, of course, all your classes as you saw there, dining options, any critical messages. I got my reminder to watch the forecast tonight. So just so much great information um, there. And for our statewide students, you can personalize that to your specific statewide site. Um, so if you're not here on the Flagstaff campus, no fear, um, you can certainly personalize that. So joining us back again, of course, is Chad and our good friend, Aaron Grisham, our Vice President of Student Affairs, who's joining us again um, this week because so much of your team and in your area's efforts are really instrumental in opening campus back up and engaging students. So thanks for joining us again. I'm delighted to be here. This is a lot of fun. It I is fun. I appreciate the opportunity to share with parents a little bit about how we're, what we're doing to prepare for their students' arrival and all the great things that we're going to provide students. Great. So, Chad, I know you sent out a survey seeking some questions and got some earlier, so I'm going to turn it, turn it over to you. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to pull some questions off of the survey that came in, and then also I've been keeping an eye on the chat, and we're going to be answering some of those questions as well. Uh, to start us off, Annika, can you talk about uh, what is available for on-campus testing? And then I don't know if Aaron wants to talk about the cost piece of that as well. Sure. sure. So, yeah, Aaron and I will hit that in a two-parter. So, on-campus now for symptomatic and close contact as determined by our contact tracing teams, um, we have our campus health services. So they have a number of testing op options from rapid to the nasal swab that you saw Mitch earlier. Also on campus that you saw in the earlier video, our own Mitch Stroman did the walkthrough testing that we've had happening on campus since Monday. So 7 a.m. to 7, I'm sorry, 11 a.m. Students don't get up at 7. <laughs> to no. 7 p.m. Um, in partnership with FEMA, our county, and a number of people on campus. We have a walkthrough testing facility, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., seven days a week, so, and free of charge. So students can walk in and then, um, you know, register, fill out some information so we know who to send those test results to, do their own self-nasal swab. It will be, they'll collect it and, and put it in the little bag like Mitch did earlier and then um, receive test results in a couple of days. Um, and our campus health services is another great option for, for getting tested. So Aaron can talk about that and cost with that. Great. I would like to add too that um, we are also, uh, once the testing, the walk-in testing at the field house, the nasal swab testing, then we will transition into a saliva test option for students. So um, we will have available testing throughout the semester. I think that's really important to uh, make sure families understand um, and as well as our students. So that will be a, can, we will continue to have that asymptomatic testing option all semester. So it's not just now at the beginning. Not it's, just it, now. We, we have plans for, uh, for the duration of mm -hmm. however long um, yep. we are acutely dealing with this. Yep. Okay. I think that's really important yeah. to share with families. We are also, um, as you said, symptomatic testing in campus health services. That's a rapid test, so students get the results in just a few minutes, uh, usually within the hour, which is excellent. Um, we're, we know that um, the insurance coverage of COVID expenses has continued to evolve. What we know is that most families' um, insurance are covering all costs related to COVID, including co-pays um, and out-of-pocket expenses. I think families need to check with their insurance companies about those expenses. If a student doesn't have insurance or is, is in a, having difficulty paying, they just need to talk with the front desk staff at Campus Health Services when they check in and we will waive those expenses for students. We do not want testing to be an option or a barrier for students. Okay. Well, that's great. Excellent. Yeah. So, so a question that came in in the chat was from James Baker, and he asked, if the student is quarantined, how do they get meals? Um, Aaron, can you speak to that a little bit? Uh, that's a great question. So when a student goes into quarantine space, our residence life uh, staff, students get an email uh, telling them how to order their meals. They'll do that every day, and our residential life staff will deliver those meals three times a day. So we, want, we know that that's an important part of a self, student self-care, and we will ensure that they get fed. It's a really simple website to log into. 
So they log in, they get to select they get to what select. they want, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Absolutely. And then um, the delivery is, I'm, I'm assuming, mass required, uh, put yes. down, knock, back away, you that bet. kind of thing. Yep. Make sure uh, them Very safe. Great. Absolutely. Yep. That's great. So I know in the survey we had some questions about what activities are planned for students. And then also coming in the chat, I believe it was Sandra asked a question about how will students uh, meet people, meet other people. Um, obviously, it's a unique environment here uh, with COVID. Uh, Aaron, can you speak a little bit about what activities are planned uh, for students? Great question, Chad. We've um, actually been working very hard, our student activities team, to put lots of uh, programs in place for students. And, and we're going to be doing that in, a, in a, a variety of ways this fall, both online and some in person where we can limit size of, of event and do the proper health screenings, temperature checks, all of those things, masks. Uh, starting this week is our Lumberjack experience, and that's our welcome week. It's really exciting. I'm just kind of surprised. It's the first day of class already. But this Friday, we have our first club fair, so students can, it's an online event. Uh, very similar to our expo that we did this summer, students can log in and find out about all of the clubs and organizations that we have on campus. And students don't need to be here physically to engage in, 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 in our programs and events. We're hosting a virtual letters um, this year because we can't do the in-person letters. That's such a great tradition, oh, obviously. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it everyone was, loves the letters. So yep. there's information on our um, Lumberjack Experience website. And um, I think we could hopefully put that in the chat so parents and students can find that out. But it, if they just Google search, Google search Lumberjack Experience, they will find all of it. We're hosting some films on the field next week. We have our part-time job fair later in the month. We're hosting a virtual concert at the end of the month, which is really fun. So students kind of get, they will get to in, uh, engage with the artist in the oh, virtual fun. concert. So we're, ho we're doing a lot of uh, events throughout the month when students get here. Um, we're gonna host some movies in Prague now, again, where we can limit um, capacity and do our health checks and make sure students are wearing their masks. But there will be a variety of events for students to participate in. I would like to say that our fraternities and sororities, that's often something that students are very interested in. Our recruitment activities will be all virtual, all online. And um, students will be able to pledge and join one of those organizations, even though they might not be with us on campus this year. Great. So. Well, and I know that um, Lumberjack Experience website, which I know your um, team member, Joey yeah. Ruiz, has yeah, been such, awesome. a, such a <laughs> champion of, it continuously yes. gets added to. So similar to our Jacks, our back website and everything COVID, things keep evolving. And, and with that one in particular, it's very additive. New events and students continuing to get super creative and how they're going to um, connect and meet, which we know is critical. And a great, and we talked about the NAU Go app. It's a great tool to download and because we will send push notifications to students about upcoming events and activities. And as parents, if you have that uh, on your phone, you'll know what's coming up and maybe uh, encourage your son or daughter, your student to, to participate and engage. Speaking of, I got one about um, some outdoor recreation courses today. So I felt like maybe I needed to take a break from my office time and go participate in some yoga out there on Lumberjack Field. Yeah. Um, so maybe I, I, I might um, crash a class here in the next week or so. <laughs> Weather's been great for that. That's I know. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, I, I do want to echo, I know you mentioned earlier that student involvement, that expo, that club fair, that's Friday at 10 a.m. Um, so students uh, should be checking that out, and that's a great way uh, to start to get connected. And, and then it's again two weeks later. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yes. okay. so it's not just Friday. If you can't join us Friday, um, a couple weeks later, look yeah. for that push notification on your Go app. Yeah. Great. So a common question that came in in the survey is, you've got all these policies that are out there. How, and, and obviously we do uh, rely a lot on people participating in those policies and making good choices, but how do we enforce those policies uh, that we have? And what are the consequences if people don't uh, follow the policies? Erin, can you speak to that a little bit? Uh, very happy to, Chad. I think as parents, if you can help us reinforce those um, those important behaviors with your students, we would, uh, I think that's important as parents to help our students understand why we're asking them to do things. Uh, we will use progressive discipline, a warning system for students 
that fail to wear masks after they've been asked or in the, in the halls if they're not abiding by our standards of residence, which is our um, ex set of expectations for students that live in the hall. And we have our code of conduct. And if, you, if students progress through, that, um, progress through that set of discipline, that ultimately that can lead to suspension or expulsion from the institution. So we know that these wearing a mask, social dis physical distancing, all of those things work. And we take that very seriously. And students should know that we will hold them accountable under our standards of residence in the residence halls and then with our student code of conduct. And, and I know um, at the admissions and Matt Student Service Center and in financial aid, student accounts, um, the Dean of Students Office, we are um, requiring the mask as students are walking in to engage with us. Now, I will say I've had the opportunity to walk around campus quite a bit, enjoying that good weather um, and physically distancing with some of my colleagues around campus. And I will say a majority of students are complying in wearing those masks. It, it, and it feels a little different, but they are. So, mm -hmm. so that's certainly an encouraging first step. Um, and as we bring more and more students to campus and, and our faculty and staff are back, um, that masking is gonna be just, just, just critical in our success in helping campus manage. Absolutely. Yeah, I would agree. I've been very encouraged by the adoption of mask wearing on campus and everyone wearing their mask uh, while they're out and about. And I, I wanna give kudos to any parents that have already helped students move in and you're wearing your mask while you help your student move in. Um, I think that sets a, a great example. Um, and the parents that are yet to move their student in, I think wearing that mask while you're helping move them in just sets such a great example um, and expectation for their time here on campus. So there are several questions in the chat around how we get our care kits. So NAU has created care kits um, where we're giving students a couple of masks, some hand sanitizer. Um, Aaron, can you speak to the, the pickup of the, the care kits? Sure, happy to. So as new students are checking in to the residence hall and they go to the field house to pick up their JAX card, our desks, uh, our tables, they can pick up their care kits there. They just need to have a student ID. For upper class students that live in the residence hall, their care kits are already in their room when they check in. And for our students that live off campus, um, some of our larger student housing complexes, we delivered the care kits there, so they should have them at check-in. Um, but students that, um, other off-campus students or upper division students just need to stop by one of the information desks in our university unions, show their ID, and they can pick up their, uh, pick up their uh, care kit. And I know there's been a few students that have said, I've only gotten one mask or I'm missing something. Just stop by the info desk or stop in the field house and we will make your care kit whole, give you that extra mask or what you might be missing. So as you can imagine, we stuffed, you know, almost 30,000 care kits. And so I'm not surprised. We might've missed one or two masks or a thermometer or something. So, but- And, I, and for our statewide sites, our yes. statewide students will receive them too. Um, so you will not be left out. And those are in the process of being distributed to different statewide sites. So um, more information coming on there. Yeah. So definitely um, not just those here on the Flagstaff campus, but our statewide. Yeah. Um, students, faculty, and staff as well. And, and uh, I know the enrollment team just picked up theirs today, so we're going to be distributing those um, here in the in the next day or two. Yeah. So it's 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 great. Well, I know you already have your NAU mask on, so so way to model that. Yeah. So thankfully, not a common question that came in in the survey uh, ahead of time, but questions around maybe having difficulty getting tested if you're asymptomatic and a healthcare provider saying you can't get tested. Annika, do you have some advice that you can talk through about that? I do. You know, I have a lot of family members that live in California and um, a couple students that I've been in contact with from Hawaii and some other areas. And usually if you state you're going into a communal living situation, that kind of turns the tide on that asymptomatic piece. Um, so that's definitely one piece. And also that it's a, a requirement to move back on campus is another piece. It's not uncommon um, across the country to have institutions requiring testing. And there are an, a number of sites. I know a couple, um, a couple big healthcare groups specifically in California that were mentioned. Um, I have done a lot of that COVID test upload checking 
um, myself, in, um, and, and so is Aaron, and we have seen a number um, from, from different, from some of those facilities. So whether it be um, CVS, Walgreens, Kaiser, um, LabCorp, we've, we've seen them all, um, and, and almost always that community living will, mm -hmm. um, in the university requirement, kind of breaks down that barrier. So after the, the testing video was played and we all saw uh, Mitch do the, the nose swab and then put it in there to be mailed, the question was asked by Christine, if it's being mailed, what, what is the turnaround uh, on those tests? Um, so Aaron, can you talk about the, the turnaround on the mailed ones? Um, for the field? For the field house set up, yeah. Mitch um, demonstrated for us very <laughs> bravely, I might add. Thank you, Mitch. It's about 72 hours. Great. So not, not long, um, but it's about 72 hours. Okay, so a common question that came in in the survey, and I feel like whenever we put the call out for questions, this is a common one, uh, the rec center, um, and, and wondering if the rec center will be open, if that will be available for students uh, to go there and work out. Uh, Aaron, can you discuss that too? We have been watching um, the Governor Ducey's orders, executive orders about bars, restaurants, and uh, gyms, uh, and he put in uh, some guidelines for counties to uh, to apply for um, the ability to reopen gyms and bars and that um, and so what we will need to do is work with the county once they submit the paperwork to uh, to allow those facilities in our community to reopen once we get that okay from the county then we will begin a phased in reopening of the rec center families and students should know that operations at the rec center will be different this fall we will be requiring masks while students work out Access to the equipment will be by appointment. And uh, we have worked with our environmental health and safety team to spread out our, uh, our equipment so that we're gonna use more of our space in the, in the center to space out that equipment. Um, and students should also know that we're not gonna have their lo uh, locker rooms open this fall. So we're, we're putting in some safety measures to make sure that we, once we open, we can stay open. And a lot of virtual classes, as we mentioned, a lot of outdoor classes, yep. why we still are enjoying this gorgeous weather. Yep, and, and, and certainly um, even um, so many Flagstaffians work out um, when it's dumping snow outside. I am not one of them. No. Um, so that's always an option too. Um, but also a ton of equipment and, and recreation type of activities from camping gear and, and hiking gear and, and even hiking trails oh, yeah. um, that can be accessed with the use of the rec center. So it's not just the, I'm going in to do my cardio or, or lift my weights. There's, there's much more to the rec center that, than just those things. Absolutely, and that's a great reminder, Annika. Thank you for, uh, I should have mentioned that. We have been providing a whole host of virtual exercise classes and workouts that students can access on their laptop or iPad in their room and, or at home and do that. Uh, we are, we, even our uh, health promotions area is offering some online meditation and some ways to take care of your, sel your, your self-care. Um, and we have camping gear and other outdoor equipment that students can check out and use uh, in and around our lovely Flagstaff area. So thanks for the reminder. So great. I actually camped last night to um, enjoy the meteor shower, as Chad mentioned earlier. So didn't have equipment from there, but I know it's always an option. Should it I is an it? option. So lots of additional questions that we plan on tackling here in a little bit. We're going to take a little bit of a break. Uh, Matt Tantow has been watching the chat, so I'm sure there's been some new questions that have come in there. Um, while we do that, we're going to do uh, look at a little video that was put together um, from the College of Engineering, Informatics, and Applied Sciences that spells out NAU Flex, and I think it'll shed a little more light on what NAU Flex looks like for the student. Let's take a look. In the College of Engineering, Informatics, and Applied Sciences, we're using the technology you're already familiar with in the classroom environment for NAU Flex. Some of our in-person laboratories are offered with take-home lab kits now, so you can do them at home. In others, we've adapted to smaller groups of people in that lab environment, and we're providing cleaning supplies that are used before and after the activities. In capstone projects and for other group work, the course component's been moved to the remote mode, but you'll still be able to meet in person for hands-on work with your small group of team members. Lectures are gonna be adapted by reducing the density of students in the classroom and rotating students through 
every other or every third course period. You'll be able to attend from a remote location when you're rotating out of the classroom. And when you're in the classroom, you can attend like normal, but wearing a mask. NEUFLEX provides a safe adaptive learning environment that handles your flexible circumstances this semester. Welcome back. Uh, lots of great questions. We were gonna tackle many of those that came in through the chat. And I know a common one that was coming in was around dining and the number of options that are available uh, for dining. Since we have a limited number of students on campus currently, uh, it is a, a lim limited options. Uh, next week on the 19th, there are gonna be many more additional options um, added. And then by the time we get to the 24th, nearly all of the options are gonna be open. Uh, Matt, anything to add to that yeah, as well? No, that's a great, uh, great uh, introduction there, Chad. We have been talking to our Director of Campus Services and Activities on dining, and here's what is currently open for folks that want to know all the varieties we have on campus. Um, we have our South Dining All You Care to Eat location open right now for in-person dining. We have Subway, The Coop, great place to get some wings and fries, uh, The Wedge, Starbucks, Einstein's, Cabrizo's, and the Sushi Place, which is a great, they have great sushi on campus. All those are open right now. And then adding to that next week will be Codobo, uh, if I said that correctly, and then Chick-fil-A opens up next week as oh, well. there you go. Yep. Chick-fil-A. There you go. Always a good one. And then the big new thing that's happening is actually on the 24th, on August 24th, uh, we'll be opening up the hotspot, which is our our largest all you care to eat location in the University Union. And in addition to that, we're actually gonna have a to-go option uh, being that's gonna be rolled out on the 24th as well for the hotspot. So for students who like um, the healthy choices at the hotspot, as well as some late night choices, um, the hotspots can be rolling out a delivery option or a to-go option. So, um, and many of these locations are open until 8 p.m and uh, probably uh, five or six of them are open until 10 p.m. at night. So we do have a lot of options currently on campus, but to Chad's point, those will continue to increase as we head into next week. And then by the 24th, almost everything will be open, so. Great. Yep. So a common question that came in, in the survey was around textbooks and how students get their textbooks. Uh, for students coming to campus, we do have a curbside pickup option uh, where they can place that order ahead of time and then call when they pull up next to the bookstore and they'll run those books um, out to you. So that's an option for you. We realize that some students are starting you know, remotely or perhaps going full remote for the uh, entire semester. Uh, they will ship books to you. So that is an option for you. And the bookstore is committed to shipping those within 24 hours. Um, and when you place that order, you do choose the shipping speed um, that you wanna pay for on that order, but they will put those in the mail and ship those out uh, within 24 hours of you placing that I order. I also would encourage students through their NAU Go app or to log on to their Louie to check their Blackboard Learn. It's BB Learn. That is our learning environment, our online learning environment. So in there, and I know many of you probably already logged into there today during your first classes, but if your first classes don't start till tomorrow, BB Learn is the place to go to look at how your um, rotation may work for in-person classes, how to log in. In BB Learn, similar to Zoom, there's a collaborate tool. Um, and so your instructor may choose to use Zoom or the collaborate tool, but if you log into BB Learn, you'll know it all. And also sometimes course materials mm -hmm. listed in there as well. So another great resource to get connected to those books and course materials. Great. So a, a common question in the survey, we got these from a few different people. What if a student's moving or traveling to campus uh, d during a class time? Because some of them may be moving in, obviously, after their, their class starts. Right. A, a majority of students will be moving yep. in after because classes started today, and we know a majority of them are, are heading to campus over the next couple of weeks. So great question. If you couldn't arrange travel to um, around your courses, reach out to your instructor, email them directly. Or if you haven't heard from them yet, I know a handful of students had um, reached out today um, on the phone or on email saying, hey, I haven't heard from my professors yet. Um, certainly encourage you to go into BB Learn. You can find their information there, reach out to them. 
but certainly if you're traveling, maybe you're traveling here next Friday and, and you're going to be on, um, on the road and can't connect, certainly let them know. Okay. You'll be able to access the course materials of the class you missed in that BB Learn share shell. Okay, so a common question, will housing or meal plans be prorated? So we did, did some changes uh, to the, the start of the term here, and that's been a question that's been asked. Yeah, so similar, so I'll tackle the housing and then I'll tackle the dining piece of that. So the housing piece, um, we, um, you're under your contract terms when you move in. So when you move into your hall, that kind of um, start your contract terms and similar to leases off campus are usually for six months, nine months, 12 months. Our lease is August through May. Um, but again, it kicks off when you move in. And so some, some of our students are already on campus and have been for a handful of days and some will move in throughout the month. Um, so we're not pro prorating um, day by day, um, similar to how um, our off-campus partners are, are doing as well. With meals a little differently, um, so if your move-in day was supposed to be maybe yesterday, the day before classes, but you're not coming for another couple weeks, and let's say you're on the 10 meal plan, it's the easiest one to talk about, um, so, uh, you would be prorated those 20 meals um, not prorated, you would be um, have those 20 meals that you didn't enjoy when you had your earlier move in time, they would be um, a bank of meals that you could use throughout the rest of um, your time with us. So the cool thing about that is, is if you are on a 10 meal, um, and, and maybe um, one of your friends um, ran out of meals, you could use one of your meals for them and both eat together at like the hot spot or the coop, get those wings and fries. Um, and so you'll have a kind of a flexible group of meals that you can use um, as kind of a debit card or declining balance. So with NAU Flex, there is uh, that rotation through the classroom uh, to manage the classroom capacity um, in many situations. How are students supposed to know when they're gonna be in the classroom, when they'll be joining remote? Um, how, how do they understand that part? Great. A couple different ways students can understand that. One, you may have heard from your faculty member in the last week or so. Um, so that would be one indication. But another great way is either through that NAU Go app in your schedule of classes, you'll see in there NAU Flex Remote, which means that that is a remote offered class for the semester. Um, or that they would see um, the course, um, I don't know, pick a course. English 105. English 105 it has been my go-to example all summer. Um, and you would see a classroom, maybe liberal studies um, 201. And so you would be on a rotation. But again, that Blackboard Learn shell, all classes this week and for most of the month are remote. So you're going to be using that Collaborate tool, a Zoom meeting with your instructors, and they will be explaining all of that because it is course specific. And what I mean by that is that we have offered and talked about a couple times um, that full remote option. And a, a number of students have chosen to do that. And so if I'm an instructor of a class and um, five of the 15 students registered for that class have chosen to go remote for the semester, then I might be in a classroom space where all 10 can join every single class period in person. In some classes, that will not be possible. And so it's really course by course specific based on the makeup of the students in that class. So I'm gonna ask you a follow-up to that. Great. You, you mentioned that within the last uh, week, week and a half, maybe they have heard from their faculty. What if they haven't heard from their faculty yet? What should they be doing? Great. Um, in that Blackboard Learn shell, you can reach out to your faculty member or reach out to the individual academic department. So let's just go with that English 105. Haven't heard from my English 105 instructor. Go ahead and reach out to the English department. Let them know, hey, I haven't heard back yet. But before you do any of those things, check that BB Learn shell and your Louis course schedule. And another follow-up here, and I, I, I know this came in through the chat as well. The idea, and, and Annika just mentioned the full remote part, and many students requested to go full remote. 
if a student still wants to request to be full remote, uh, what, what would that look like? Matt, I'm going to throw that your way, actually. Yeah, so we are still uh, taking full remote requests from students. All they need to do is give us a call. So the form that we originally had up over the summer has been taken down. And so if students are interested in doing full remote, they can give us a call at the Student Service Center at 928-523-9501. And uh, we will uh, work with them to get that form completed and uh, also then verify their courses are available to go fully remote. So that's sort of the process. Once we're able to capture your class schedule, we review that. And if any of those classes are required to be in person, we, most, uh, we will hand that over to academic advising to work with you to um, get your schedule built so you can go fully remote. And students may choose to do that mm -hmm. as they've experienced this first yep. couple of days and choose to do that. So given that, um, given um, that number is great. So um, please definitely reach out. And if you haven't yet checked in, um, when you do that reaching out, you could also reach out to housing and dining yep. and let them know that you um, will not be joining for the fall and they'll share information with you um, about um, the spring. And if you choose to join us, um, there. I did want to make mention of one other academic piece um, that I, I left off, and I'm going to have Erin actually talk about it because I heard her talk about it earlier today, and that is in regards to policy and the mask wearing in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that reminder, Annika. Yeah. So, um, uh, academic, we've adopted an academic policy related to that. And it's on all of our student, all of the syllabi for our courses and students are required to wear masks in their academic classrooms. And faculty and instructors will ask students to leave if they don't have a mask, leave, go get one and come back. Students should know that if they continue to choose not to wear a mask, that there, uh, there is a process, a similar uh, process uh, through, ac their, through that policy that may end up in their uh, removal from that course. So we take that very seriously, and it's important that students wear those masks in the academic buildings. So just a bold, highlighted, underlined, italicized, wear your mask. Yeah, and absolutely. you can check us all Mask out. up, right Obviously, there. We, we knew we were gonna be asked some mask questions and enforcement questions from that survey that Chad sent out earlier. So we all um, are, are Friends and residents life, um, you'll see the RA teams uh, wearing these as well, just as a friendly reminder. You know, a follow-up uh, question regarding masks. Had some questions on the chat about employees and oh, what are the expectations of employees uh, in terms of wearing masks and what's the accountability piece there as well? Great, great question. So employees are no different. Employees, um, staff and faculty also required to wear masks. And so... I know in my office, I sit in my office and I can close my door and, and I can take off my mask because I'm in that office. But as soon as I walk through that door to, to go grab my lunch out of the refrigerator or head down the hall, um, I make sure I have that mask on. And if employees are not similar to the students, their supervisors will be addressing that. And if necessary, we'll call the amazing um, uh, a human resource department to assist should that become necessary. I know staff are so excited for students to be back on campus. I've seen a ton of staff wearing masks. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. uh, hopefully um, those conversations aren't necessary, but if they are, we are ready. Great. So a question that had come in ahead of time in the survey, and I know we were talking a little bit about faculty, the classroom experience, all of that. Um, but office hours. So faculty traditionally hold office hours where a student can come and meet with them and ask questions. Uh, what will office hours look like? So I did, um, we did have this question in advance. So I reached out to the amazing provost team. So um, Dr. Stearns was here last time. You met Dr. John Jorgis prior. Um, and, and Dr. Astrid Clark as well. Um, and, and Dr. Dixon. I mean, it's just an amazing team uh, uh, of individuals, and it's going to depend on the faculty member. So they might be doing virtual one-on-ones with you. They may have in-person office hours, and certainly during this great weather, may be outside, so it may not be in their office proper, um, but it also may be. So 
again, that BB Learn Shell and in that syllabus, mm -hmm. which the syllabus is the guide to each and every class. So it spells out the learning objectives, what you can expect in the class. The rules of the class oftentimes gives you a calendar of things that are due and readings and expectations before each class. Also in there typically is how to contact your instructor um, for office hours or one-on-one -on -one time. You know, Anna, can I would add that contacting your professors, I wouldn't, don't be shy. Students should not hesitate to contact their faculty either verse in, uh, you know, during their office hours, but also just via email. If you have a question, that's a really important way to make sure you communicate with your faculty and students should not be afraid or hesitant or worried about contacting their faculty member. That's a really important part of being a student. Great, great reminder. One more question that I had coming ahead and then I'm gonna throw it to Matt if there's any other chat ones that he had jotted got down a couple. Um, yep, before. So. Uh, but a common question that came in in the survey ahead of time was around housing after the fall semester. Uh, do students have to move out of the hall when the when the fall semester comes to an end? Or, or what does that look like? Great, great question. So we did start classes today. Um, so exciting. And do plan to wrap all the semester up, including finals and commencement, by the Thanksgiving holiday there at the end of November. And our spring semester is due to start, um, I believe, January 11th, which seems so far away, but I know it's going to be here in just a snap. Um, so students are not necessarily required to move out of their halls. Most certainly do, and most of our halls do close down. They can stay, keep their stuff in there. They don't have to move everything out um, like they will at the end of the year. So they can take the essentials with them, be away for the winter break, and then come back to that same hall. For those that do need what we call downtime housing, a little slower time on campus during that winter break, there are specific halls that we offer downtime housing. So just encourage you to email housing at nau.edu to um, share with them your needs for that winter break um, if, if you have any, if you don't plan to head home. Great. Um, another question that came up on the uh, chat here just a few minutes ago and sort of moving past winter into spring would be, uh, is uh, NAU considering NAU Flex for spring? So, so I'm glad you asked that question because I think it's kind of been um, the, hmm, I wonder what is going to happen. And, and I think it's going to depend, like everything that you shared, you know, everything with COVID is happening um, and changing so quickly. Certainly in Arizona, we saw some, some elevated cases in the month of July that we didn't anticipate even two months, a few weeks earlier, um, but had them and now are leveled off and on, on the right path. Um, and so certainly I think this new modality of NAU Flex and the new technology, I think higher education and colleges and universities across the country, there are gonna be things that we've learned and adopted during this crazy pandemic that will now be common practice for us all. NAU Flex very well could be that, oh, some of that woven into that as well. Will we be um, traveling as much? Will we be always meeting virtually? You know, it's, it's just so, it's a little early to tell. I mean, certainly we have heard from many students who have chosen to be all remote. They don't wanna come back to campus in their own personal risk. They have said, you know what? I'm gonna choose to engage using NAU Flex for this semester and then play it by year and mm -hmm. see how the situation mm -hmm. evolves. We also have heard from a number of students and some, some locally that are like, hey, Annika, when can I move in? I'm ready to get out of mom and dad's house. So um, how, how fast can I move in that are anxious to be on campus and part of the campus community in that um, in-person face-to-face way? Um, and so as we have really um, worked hard and, and certainly a huge um, shout out to the planning that has gone on on campus and, and particularly to the faculty on their first day back in the classroom that um, so much effort has been made to make NAU Flex just amazing um, and, and coupled with our ITS team. Um, so, so 
I think we have to take the wait and see attitude with mm -hmm. that, as my dad used to say. <laughs> um, but I do think some of the th practices that we've adopted in the last six months w will mm -hmm. stay in, in how we operate um, day to day. Definitely. That's all the questions I had. Great. Well, we absolutely loved doing these forecasts from Flagstaffs throughout this summer. Um, this is our kind of, I guess, finale here. I know, I <laughs> yeah. know. I would like to thank our amazing NAU TV crew. They're all looking at us. They're doing some woo-woo, raise the roof. Um, just amazing team. Um, and look forward to um, thinking of new ways we can continue to partner. Um, but amazing support, amazing direction to us as, as TV rookies. Absolutely. And we, we love this opportunity. Hopefully you found it helpful uh, throughout the summer, helping you as students, as families make decisions um, and, and feel safe with your return to campus. And I'm excited to announce uh, Jacks are back. Yeah, we're, we're back. Are. Jacks are back. Yeah. Welcome back to campus. Uh, and we're excited for those of you still yet to move on to have you moving on in the next uh, couple of weeks here. And campus is coming alive. And I'm excited to see your your masked smiling faces uh, walking around campus. Um, and we've got a, a short video here uh, to welcome you to campus. So see you on campus. The day is finally here. It is the start of the fall semester and the Jacks are back. Welcome to NAU. Welcome back, Lumberjacks. Welcome back, Jacks. Welcome back, Lumberjacks. Welcome back, Jacks. Welcome back, Jacks. Welcome back, Jax! <laughs>